It's now time for the Weekly with News 6 Morning Anchor, Justin Warmuth. This is the Weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmuth. Good morning, I'm Justin Warmuth. Around the country, more and more evidence suggests that black Americans are getting the vaccine at far lower rates than white segments of the population. Experts say there are a number of factors playing a role, including mistrust of the medical system, doubts about the vaccine, and lack of access. This morning, Orlando pediatrician Dr. Candace Jones is here to talk about her experience getting the shot and what health leaders need to do to address the growing problem. First off, let's get, I, I want your reaction on, on how the rollout of the vaccine has gone so far. Yeah, you know, it's hard to judge uh, or give critique when you're not like in the trenches and I have no idea all the things that are uh, coming at our health officials, public health officials um, and administrators and legislatures that are trying to get this going. But as far as, you know, the phase rollout, I think that was a, um, a good thing to kind of strategically um, say, how are we going to distribute this, right? Starting with the most vulnerable and, and so forth and so on. But there have been some obvious hiccups um, in, in a tough situation, and those have been very open to the public. Um, so things need to be more efficient, obviously. And I, I, I'm hopeful with the new administration that they're working at, as a task force and really collecting the right data and um, making these adjustments as we need to go go forward to uh, get most people vaccinated. So one thing that affected me here, affected us here, um, for example, the major hospitals um, you know, we're vaccinating first here in Central Florida. And so some healthcare professionals were um, kind of left out of that, and some still are. For example, um, my husband is with Advent Health, and those um, individuals who are with ORMC, they readily were able to get the vaccine. Um, but community pediatricians like myself and my colleague, Dr. Kaplan, we didn't, and our staff either. And so we were really um, calling and asking and begging. And then at some point um, recently, they did extend it out to community, or ORMC did extend it out to community pediatricians. And we were so grateful and both of us were able to be vaccinated, but still our staff. And even though we're in pediatrics, um, we have cases of COVID. And so our staff, all of us are exposed and we would love for them to be able to get it as well. So there's, there's, you know, we talk about essential workers or healthcare workers being kind of that front line. Um, and I know that's more like emergency room and COVID units, but still we all are exposed in some way more than the general um, population. So that's one thing I think needs to be improved upon. Um, also like other uh, targeted groups like teachers and things like that, because we want kids to stay in school. Um, now there are more ways they've gotten better because we know the retail pharmacies, the large grocery chains, convention centers, community sites. So they're, they're trying to expand that accessibility. And I think that's, uh, that's the way to go. Yeah, it seems like it's gotten better, certainly over the last few weeks. I think more doses right. have become available. They're able to kind of cater to more people. Um, right. I want to talk about your experience with the vaccine. How, how did everything go? Uh, any adverse reaction? Um, and are you more relieved than ever before getting that, getting that dose? Yeah, I'm, I'm, thank you for asking that because I've been doing my part to really try to um, help the community, especially people of color with the hesitancy to see that I got the vaccine. My husband got the vaccine. He um, got Pfizer and I got the Moderna. So that's pretty good to get two experiences. And we've been sharing it out to our families and our social media platform. Um, neither one of us had any bad experience. Of course, the uh, notorious sore arm uh, and and my husband, after his second dose, he said he felt a little like maybe a slight headache, but that was it. He didn't even take anything for it. Um, I was a little tired, but I did work that day, so I didn't know what it was due to. And I felt a little hot um, uh, 24 hours the night after the vaccine, but I checked my temperature several times and it was only up to 99. So very, very, very minor symptoms. So yes, we are super um, happy to be vaccinated. And my in Alabama, my mother, my um, my father and my grandmother have received their vaccines and soon will be getting their second doses. So um, I, I'm just I'm just happy about that, that they've been able to get that that layer of protection. 
I know from my experience, it's just a relief to know that the people you love the most, um, who are the most vulnerable, finally receive that vaccine and you know that you can hopefully soon get to interact with them once again. Um, you talked about your experience between uh, you got the Moderna, your husband got Pfizer. You know, so many people, whether it's misinformation or what, what have you, like to share which one they had, which one they prefer, even though they received another one based on what they heard from someone else. And that's how it kind of spreads like wildfire. Uh, it doesn't matter, right? I'm, in the grand scheme of things, between at least Moderna and Pfizer, I know that there are more on the way that will uh, be available soon. But when it comes to Moderna and Pfizer, it, it doesn't seem to necessarily matter. Just to, it matters that you get one. That's right. I, I, I've said before, I think I said on the first podcast, you know, I don't think you're going to really have a choice. Um, and if you do, um, that's great. Obviously, do your research and do your due diligence to know uh, what fits for you. But between those two, Moderna and uh, Pfizer, I think they're very comparable. And so whichever one you can get, get it. And again, like you said, um, you know, AstraZeneca and Johnson are trying to get their EUA. So they may be on the market soon, which also increases that accessibility to more vaccines for the um, country. So I'm looking forward to that as well. You know, we've seen demand super high. And I think that caught a lot of people off guard saying, I thought there was going to be some hesitancy. But I think when you open it up, and more vaccine becomes available, and you have a higher population of people who are of are able to get the vaccine finally, you're going to start to see that hesitation. So your concerns moving forward as more of the general public has the opportunity to receive the vaccine. Well, I, I think that there's this underlying hesitancy, and that's something that's been going on with vaccines in this country for some years now. Um, and then with this vaccine being new and kind of created pretty quickly and all of the nuances around that, I think the hesitancy with the COVID vaccine has been tremendous. And there are our are groups, specific uh, groups of people, communities that are more hesitant than others. You know, there, there are only some states that are that are collecting data on racial groups and when their uh, uh, their rates of vaccine. And we know that whites are getting vaccinated at three times higher the rate of blacks. And so we need to, and that probably comes back to hesitancy and accessibility. Um, so we need to target, um, make sure this vaccine distribution is equitable and we need to uh, target the most vulnerable and the most affected, which are the uh, black and brown communities. And we need to do whatever we need to do that, make it more accessible for them, taking the vaccine to them, make sure the messaging is um, culturally competent and the messenger looks like them so that they are less hesitant to receive the vaccine. Do whatever we can to make sure that all groups of people want this vaccine and can get this vaccine. Coming up, Dr. Jones will talk about herd immunity and how the new COVID variant is playing a role in putting the pandemic behind us. We'll be right back. This is the weekly on ClickOrlando.com with Justin Warmith. Welcome back. There is a big racial disparity when it comes to receiving the coronavirus vaccine. According to the latest data, black Americans are getting the shot at a much lower rate in Florida, despite being adversely impacted by the virus. Orlando pediatrician Dr. Candace Jones is back with us now to explain the best approach to closing the vaccine gap. You know, taking it to that next step, do you think it is churches or do you think it might be community centers? That next step that we're going to take as more doses become available? You are absolutely spot on. Absolutely right. You know, um, uh, Marcella Nunez Smith with the Biden administration COVID-19 uh, Health Equity Task Force said, we can't address what we cannot see. And so I think it's irresponsible if certain the states that aren't collecting the right data to know. You can't just say, well, we're trying to get it to everyone. Nope, because it is a disproportionately affecting certain communities and devastating certain communities. So if you're going to target long-term facilities for that reason, and those that have at-risk health conditions for that reason and essential workers for that reason, then also you should target black and brown communities that have been devastated. And so, like you said, we have to meet the people where they are and take the vaccine to them. And the beacon of our communities are our churches, our community centers, the barber shop, the salon, uh, go door to door, have mobile options to park in certain areas of community. We really have to do that. And 
then I also would like to say that pediatricians um, should, I mean, we've applied for the vaccine at our practice and are just waiting. Mm -hmm. Pediatricians should have access to this vaccine. We can give it to down to 16 for Pfizer and 18 Moderna. And we should be able to have um, the the, uh, approval to give it to parents that walk in with them. We just got to get really creative and um, fo- laser focused on who needs this the most and get it to them. If someone is hesitant, uh, understandably so, um, what, what's your messaging to them? How do you, how do you persuade them to, to get the vaccine? Yeah, you know, I did a a Facebook live and I tried to break all of that down and so many um, doctors of color specifically and so many doctors of all backgrounds have been doing this um, to try to overcome and dispel the misinformation that's out there. And I just take all of the concerns that I've heard from people being a new vaccine, the warp speed of it, uh, all of the doubts and all the things that are um, against the vaccine. And I try to break them down and explain them. And I think that's what we need. Uniform messaging is key and the messenger is important. And that has to be targeted. Um, You know, someone that individuals can trust and relate to, and they also need to see people like them and know that they have been involved with the vaccine trials. They are taking the vaccine. They need to see their leaders, their public officials and teachers taking um, the vaccine. And so this type of uniform messaging and public health messaging is so important. And I think it's sort of being done, but it could be, it could be uh, revved up a little bit. So, you know, all of this comes as as we try to vaccinate Americans, um, that there are different variants of COVID uh, circulating. And I I know that's a, it really concerns a lot of people. what, what are your concerns with this new COVID variant, especially in Orange County, which has seen uh, cases uh, not rise exponentially, but they have had an increase? Right. You know, we, I was feeling a little hopeful because looking at the pediatric data and looking at the national data, you know, we were hearing what a week ago that more people have gotten the vaccine than new cases of COVID, right? Than, than, than people that have COVID. And so they were showing a, a, you know, a little bit decline. Okay. Are we going our way down? And then this variant is just take, this new variant is just taking off. And then we have Super Bowl and everybody is in the streets and I'm just like, ah, you know, so, so we're just going through these peaks and valleys and I just really wish I, I love again the Biden's administration 100 days like please let's do right let's mask let's so we need to spread that around that's one of the concerns I've also had with you know that disconnect between federal to state where it feels like this state is doing this, this state is doing that, the federal government wants to do this. And I know we have states' rights, but I really wish we could all get on one accord and come together and decide on the best way to approach this thing and um, and do it together so that everybody comes along. It really matters. Uh, if you can line up kids in a classroom and get them all to go potty when they don't want to at home, <laughs> we know we can do it for the masses, right? Um, so I hope I answered your question and kind of got off there, but I, yeah. It, it just, you know, it, you mentioned it, federal to state, and then really the state allocates certain amounts for, for different counties. And, and that doesn't mean that you can't go to a different county, but they're really trying to, to tell folks, hey, you know, we're trying to make this as close to your house as possible. So that's right. why, you know, we, we have it set up here, but each county does it differently. And, and we have nine counties that we cover here in Central Florida, uh, as far as New Six as a station. So each county might do you know, the online portal, some might do it by phone, some come first come first serve. And so there's a lot of confusion with just, we need to find a way to, to just, Hey, this is how we do it. This is how you do it. If you want to go get it today, you can go get it today. If the, if the supply is there, um, the herd immunity part of all of this, you know, we've heard Dr. Fauci talk about this once, once we do have this vaccine as we, as I think 10% have received their first dose in America, which is a start. Uh, there was 60 to 70 percent anywhere from there, uh, as far as the population is concerned, needs to get vaccinated to reach that herd immunity level. But it sounds like because of this variant, it, it's now 80 percent. And that is a, a, a large feat um, 
and, I, and everyone wants to get back to normal, but it's going to take getting to that level to really go back to what the world was like pre-pandemic, right? I totally agree. And, you know, all these numbers are always changing. You're mo more up to date than me. I can't keep up at this it's point. Tough. No, <laughs> it's, it's a lot, tough. right? <laughs> and I know they have to tease those things out, you know, for these different variants and all of that stuff as well. Um, but yes, the herd immunity piece is key. This is about public health. This is about all of us coming together and doing this thing together so that we can get back to our lives. Um, and until that happens, until everyone gets on board with social distancing and wearing a mask and getting the vaccine, because we have to have all the layers of mitigation, right? Um, to combat this pandemic. And so again, we have, it, this is a tough, job that we have before us. And that's why I hate to critique because I couldn't imagine if I had to be processing all of this. Yeah. Um, but I am hopeful um, that we have the right team in place. And I'm hopeful that um, we're going to soon start seeing more strategies and, and more targeted um, um, implementation to get people vaccinated. And I hope this messaging comes along and we get more stock of the vaccine. Just everything gets better and better um, as time goes so that we can get over this. Last thing for you, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're getting to that point. We're almost to the finish line. Um, if you had a message just for, for our viewers as, as we kind of move through the next, uh, through the spring and then to the summer, um, what would that message be? You know, I say, do your part, do your part. Okay. We, you need to follow all the safety guidelines. This is my message all the time. I know people get tired of hearing, hearing it, but in the sake of messaging, wear your mask, wash your hands, please social distance and limit your numbers. Okay. No more Super Bowl crowds, please research carefully, get vaccinated, but be careful with misinformation and listen to the experts. That, that's just what I've been trying to shout out to everyone. And for people of color, I say, as far as this vaccine is concerned, yes, your hesitancy um, uh, the, over with historical trauma and distrust of the healthcare system and the just ongoing daily racism that you may be experiencing. It is all real and I totally understand, but I am comfortable and so many other doctors of color and healthcare workers of color are comfortable with this vaccine. This vaccine is not that, okay? It's not that. And so we need you not to, to really think about thinking your best interests at this time and get this vaccine because our communities are the most affected and the most devastated. And so you have to do your part to help that problem out and get vaccinated. And my thanks to Dr. Jones for her time this week. For more information on vaccine locations and how to book an appointment near you, just head to clickorlando.com vaccine. I'm Justin Mormuth. Hope you have a great Sunday.